you're going to use the Wolfram Cloud or Mathematica to fit some breast cancer data to a logistic function. So here we have entered a set of data, which I have named BC. There's a set of XY data points. The X represents the age and the Y represents a percent. And the percent is the likelihood of breast cancer within the next 10 years. So then we see that as someone ages, that uh, likelihood goes up and then to be uh, relevant to the logistic problem, then it's going to first, the likelihood is going to first rise slowly, then rise rapidly, then sort of start to slow down again. So always be rising, but the rate of rising uh, will change. So here we have used the list plot method. So the first argument is the data we want to make a plot of, and that will be called BC. The second argument is plot label, and we want to label our graph, so we called it likelihood of breast cancer. The third argument is the axes label, that is an x-y pair. The x-axis was age, and the y-axis was a percent. And then we have added a plot range, so this is a y range, and so we said we want to plot from 0 to 4. And this is for when we make our plot of our fit function, we will also give it a plot range, and that will get the two graphs to sync up as much as possible. The characteristic behavior of a logistic function is that it increases at first slowly and then begins to pick up with a sort of an exponential growth, but then it hits some kind of saturation and that rate of growth uh, saturates. We have three parameters, uh, an x0 parameter, which marks the sort of midpoint of the S-shaped curve. The L parameter is saying how high we are going, and the K parameter says how fast we are getting there. So next we are going to enter the definition of a logistic function that we are using. And so we've given it a name, uh, I called it logist, and it has arguments L underscore K underscore X zero underscore and X underscore. So don't forget the underscores when defining a function in Wolfram and they're known as blanks in that situation. And also remember, colon equals. So logist square bracket L underscore K underscore X zero underscore X underscore close square bracket colon equals. And then it's L slash for divide by a big set of parentheses for the full denominator. One plus the built-in exponential function capital EXP square bracket minus K parentheses X minus X zero close parentheses close square bracket close parenthesis for the big denominator. And remember, x0 is the midpoint of the logistic S-shaped curve, L is the maximum where it's sort of heading to, and K sort of says how steep the growth is. Now we want to use that function we've just defined as a fit function to fit our data to. And so we're going to use the built-in method find fit Again, it's, we can't use linear model fit because the parameters are not all linear. So we're going to use find fit. First, we're going to start without any suggestions, and then we're going to add some suggestions for these parameters. So we started off with, I just named the fit BC fit, and I said equals find fit square bracket. And there are four arguments to find fit. The first one is the data, which we've called BC. The second is the function that we are fitting to. So we're going to use the logist function that we defined with the parameters L, K, X, zero, and the variable X. The next argument in find fit, we identify which uh, quantities are serving as parameters. So that is L, K, and X, zero. And then our fourth argument is what quantity is serving as a variable. And that, in that case, it is X. And if then we hit a shift enter, we get a set of values and there's no indication from Mathematica that it failed to converge. But the K is negative and times 10 to the sixth and the X zero 
is times 10 to the seventh. So these numbers just look a bit crazy. So I decided I would uh, restart and this time give some starting points. And what do we remember that the function, that what the uh, parameters, what purpose the parameters serve? So L was where we're heading. So we are heading to around 4%. So we'll put in a guess of four for L. Uh, K was how fast it went up. I don't have a good guess for that. So I just said one. And then X zero is the sort of midpoint of the S. Well, I had already plotted just the data. And so I saw it was around 45. So I put that in. So this time around in, in input five, we have BC equals find fit. And again, now the first argument is the data BC. The second argument is the logist function with L, K, X, zero, and X arguments in the logist function. The third argument of find fit is what's uh, identifying the, the parameters, but now we're also giving the parameters starting points. So our parameters are L, K, and X, zero. We're giving L a starting point of four, K a starting point of one, X, zero a starting point of 45. And then our last uh, argument of the find fit method is that x is the variable. This time it gave us uh, output that seemed to be reasonable numbers. Uh, the L was, a, was close to our original four. The K was 0.128. I don't know if that's reasonable or not, but I'm supposing it is. And the X zero stayed close to 45. So the L and the K stayed close to what I thought they would be. The K did some changing, but I had no good, real good guess for the K in the first place. So I sort of trust this result this time. Next, we are using the plot method. We are plotting the logist function that we defined. We're putting in the three fit parameters that we found from fit, find fit. And the X is the variable we are plotting over. We're plotting from X of 20 going up to 70 to match the data that is in the list plot. And we've included the plot range to make sure that vertically it goes from zero to four. This plot range argument that we put in the list plot and the plot was probably unnecessary for the two of them, but I found in other scenarios then it's sort of useful to get them to match up, so I've included it here. Here we're using the Wolfram method show to put the two pieces together. Out two was the list plot, out six was the plot of the fit function. And here we're just going to show a little bit more of what Wolfram Cloud slash Mathematica can do. It can take a derivative. So a derivative is the, the slope. It's how the function is changing. And you can get uh, Mathematica to take a function of it by using the method capital D. So in in eight, we see capital D square bracket. Then we're taking the derivative of our logist function. We've put in our specific parameters and left x as a variable, and then taking that second x is saying that we're taking the derivative with respect to x, and then out eight is that derivative of that logistic function. So we can plot that derivative. Again, the derivative is the slope, is the change, and we see that it's what we expect for logistic function. The change, the slope, is small in the beginning and then rises up and then becomes small again. In calculus, one finds the maxima or the minima by taking a derivative and setting it equal to zero to use a, a solve. For the logistic function, the maximum and the minimum are pretty boring. It's a sort of a minimum at the beginning and a maximum at the end, so uh, not terribly interesting. More interesting for the logistic model is where it is changing most rapidly or where its slope is a maximum. And so if we want to do this, if we want to find this, what's called the inflection point, then we must take the second derivative, the derivative of the derivative. And so that's what we're doing here in, in 10. Out eight was our derivative. 
and we are using d once again the the derivative method and we're acting on out eight which was the first derivative and we're taking the derivative of that with respect to x so it's the derivative of the derivative known as the second derivative and so it gives us this big long complicated mess and that's what Mathematica is good at doing this algebra this tedious algebra for us and so then we can find where the derivative is a maximum by setting the second derivative equal to zero. So the second derivative was out 10. We are setting it equal to zero. Remember in equations, we have two equals. So out 10 equal equals zero. And then we want to solve that for x instead of trying to get it to do some exact thing. Uh, we're going to just use n solve to solve it numerically. And there it is in out 11 giving us the answer. X is 45.5606. But that was just the X0 parameter. So the X0 parameter all along for us was the inflection point.